Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. It's Edge0626 here. Hope you're all doing great. Hope you all had a fantastic holiday, no matter what holiday you celebrate. As long as you had a good time with your friends and family and ate some bomb-ass food, that's all I truly care about. Before we start today's video, please go down to the description. All my social media links are down there. I would like for you, if you want to see more or hear more from me, please subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, and so much more all down in that description, including 69 Whiskey, my podcast I have with my friend Eric. I'll talk about that a little bit more towards the latter half of the video. But let's just quickly go over a couple of things. I absolutely hate New Year's resolutions. Not for the reasons that you may think. Not because they're broken two weeks into the year. I hate New Year's resolutions in the sense where people believe that because they make these resolutions, they're going to be a completely different person than what they were last year. And let's be honest, I know a lot of pieces of shit, and I've seen a lot of pieces of shit in the world. The fact that I see these people continuously make New Year's resolutions saying that they're going to be better kind of makes me sick to my stomach. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I love this meme I have with Goodfellas. And Joe Pesci is in that, it's in that famous restaurant scene in the beginning of the movie where it's like, funny how? How am I funny? There's a meme I have on my phone. I think I might include it somewhere in the course of this video. Where it's, new year, new me. You're still going to be the same motherfucker you were last year. Or something like that. I don't know if the years are going to line up because it is 2022 and not like the mid-2010s. But either way... It's still relevant because at the end of the day, no, you're not going to be a completely different person. You're still going to be the same piece of garbage. That's all I have to say about that. And I shouldn't pass judgment on the other people, but honestly, I've become so cynical over the course of the last couple of years that it's kind of hard for me to do so. Maybe that's a New Year's resolution in myself to not be such a judgmental prick all the time. But with what I see online... And what I see on YouTube videos and watching these videos of people do really stupid shit, it's really kind of hard for me to do that. Nonetheless, I'm going to pretty much negate everything I just said and have my own New Year's resolutions. Things that I actually hope I can achieve this year and things I'm definitely going to try and work towards. Because the way I see it is that you're never going to truly change yourself. But what you can do is improve on the building blocks and the foundation that's already there. That's how I see this year's New Year's resolutions. Because let's be honest, everybody's been pretty much beaten to shit over the course of the last couple of years with everything going on with COVID, the government, all this other stuff. Let's try and improve on the building blocks that are already there rather than tear down the foundation and try and start anew. That doesn't make any sense to me. So without further ado, I've broken up my New Year's resolutions into three separate parts discussing numerous different topics. So let's start with the personal ones, as I typically like to do. My first New Year's resolution is less timidness. Now, I'm not sure if I've ever really shown this on the channel. I do believe that when you listen to 69 Whiskey, I do come off a little bit more timid than I typically would like to admit. One of my New Year's resolutions is being less timid and less reserved, for lack of better terms, because I feel as though that that sort of attitude that I have, which has been instilled in me, probably, you know, self-induced onto me, because I just had a really rough time socially, and that's where I be kind of became a little bit more timid and a little bit more, I guess, for lack of better terms, weak, as much as I hate to admit that. And I think it's gotten away of a lot of my goals. And... I hope this year I can start taking steps to change that sort of shit. Because to be honest with you, the fact that I'm even uttering those fucking words kind of makes me sick to my stomach. So that's step one for me is to change the timidness, the reservedness, be a little bit more open, be a little bit more cutthroat, if that makes any sense to you. Number two, I want to be less hard on myself. I am my own biggest critic, and it kind of ties into the previous point I just made with the timidness. But I'm a very hard person on myself. And I've had discussions with a couple of people. And they tell me, why are you so hard on yourself? You're so talented in so many different things that why can't you just get it through your thick fucking skull 
that you are good at these things and you just have to improve on them and build on them more than what you already have now. And it's not just even professionally. Personally, too, I'm very hard on myself. And I think that's why certain aspects of, you know, maybe not having a relationship for a long period of time like I have has kind of gotten the best of me to an extent. And I can try and change it the best I can. But at the same time, you know, it's going to be tough. There's a lot of work on myself that I have to do to get to that point that I want to be. And it may not necessarily be achieved in one calendar year. But at least if the building blocks are put onto the foundation, maybe, just maybe, there's hope for me yet in that regard. Number three, achieve steady employment in broadcasting. For those of you that don't know, I have made the, what some may consider to be a very stupid decision, to go back to school. But not just any school. Not like a master's degree, not like a doctorate or anything of that nature. But a broadcasting school where they're going to train me in things that I haven't necessarily been a part of in quite a long time. Keep in mind, I used to work at a radio station, a pretty prominent one in the state of New Jersey. And because of COVID, I lost that job. And while I was still doing podcasting, I still kind of knew what was going on in the industry from time to time by listening to various radio stations. But at the same time, there's nothing like being in a studio and knowing software and knowing equipment and things of that nature. And I haven't been in that professional setting in so long that I feel as though it's also hindered my growth professionally. And that's why I'm deciding to go to this school and pay, you know, almost $15,000 because I believe that this school is what's going to help kickstart me to finding better employment and doing things that I want to do and achieve something that a lot of people that I met doing YouTube thought I could achieve a long time ago. So I don't want to let them down, obviously. And last, but certainly not least, as far as personal achievements or resolutions go, Operation Jacked and Juicy. Now, Operation Jacked and Juicy never truly ended because I'm still nowhere near where I want to be. This past year was very tough in trying to make improvements in terms of weight loss and aesthetics in the gym. This year, the excuses go out the window and it's time to finally put my fucking foot down because I look at myself in the mirror and I absolutely hate what I see. And when you hate what you see every day for 365 days of the year, you have to make a change. And for some people, that isn't enough for them. But for me, it is. Because I hate the way I look. I knew what I used to look like or what I was getting to look like back in 2019. And I want that back. So that's my goal, is to get that back. Now let's move on to the YouTube New Year's resolutions. First up, work with more creators. I know I say this every year and it seems to never really pan out, but I keep being hopeful that maybe someone out there with a relatively similar following to me reaches out or I reach out to them and say, hey, I like your content. I'd like to work with you. I would like to help grow our channels. I actually have a similar sort of network in podcasting And I'll kind of get to this later on in the video, but I have a similar network in podcasting where I'm a part of various group chats that help retweet stuff and we interact with each other. We get guest stars. We've gotten a couple of guests from that group chat and they're the coolest fucking people. I want that, but for YouTube. And granted, if you've kept an eye on my social media over the course of the last couple of months, not even, maybe even weeks, I kind of was going at it with a guy because I thought he was a jerk off. And for a guy that's smaller in terms of channel, for me to think that he's king shit, I don't really tolerate that bullshit. So I may never work with him, but to be honest, he's kind of a fucking dweeb anyway. So I wouldn't want to work with anyone I consider to be uh, a loser, more or less. Number two, stream. I know I said this last year, and guess what? I actually did kind of achieve it. I didn't lie in that regard, but my brother had to take his monitor back when he went to move into Rutgers in college. And that was the monitor that I was using to kind of look over and interact with the chat. So I'm still back down to one monitor and I can't really work 
with one monitor. I need a multiple monitors. I need multiple different viewpoints of things so I can have everything up on the screen without having to deal with, you know, jumbling around everything. At least I could just look over. I don't have to like keep clicking windows out because that just gets annoying and it just, for the viewer, I can't imagine it's a very good experience in my honest opinion. So my goal is to hopefully get back into streaming. I need to get another monitor, one that maybe even could be better for gaming and I can use the one I have now as a way of looking at the chat or monitoring a couple other things on a different screen. And last but certainly not least for the YouTube section is more consistency. Now I'm not gonna lie to you all. I'm actually quite disappointed in how I treated the channel throughout the course of the year. I started out on such a high note and because work duties and just my overall mental well-being and not being burnt out got in the way, I decided that the YouTube channel had to take a back seat for a little while. And I didn't upload for a couple weeks at a time. I still haven't been able to upload for a couple weeks at a time. But that's part of the reason to the fact that I want to create better content for you guys by making videos a different way than what I'm typically used to making them. I don't want to do the easy way anymore. In some regards, the easy way may be useful down the line for other things, but as far as making commentaries go, the easy way no longer works for me. I said last year that I wanted to improve, you know, my quality of videos. I wanted to improve my quality of making commentaries, and I think I'm doing that now, finally, that I've implemented this sort of editing regimen. But I think... With that, sacrifices have to be made, and I don't think I can ever get back to the consistency I had, and I was having, for roughly two, two and a half years, I think. It, it was a long time I went on the streak I was going on. It was a long time. So, if I can at least get back to some sort of consistency, whether it's making a video a week, making a video or two a week, it all depends on the types of games that are out there, too. Because keep in mind... Gaming is in the fucking shitter, at least AAA gaming is. So it's hard for me to play games that I enjoy and make content off of because Call of Duty sucks. Battlefield 2042 sucks, and I'll make a video about that in the next week or so. And last but certainly not least, WWE 2K, a staple on this channel, isn't going to be out until next year, or this coming year in this case. 2022 and I don't know when the fuck that's gonna happen at this point because I'm not even sure if they're gonna have a game with all the fucking releases they've had WWE this year and who knows when the fuck the AEW game's gonna come out it all depends on what's coming out for me in addition to editing and finding topics to talk about but that's just me so the third and final segment uh regards to 69 whiskey my podcast if you haven't checked it out yet I think you're missing out on some pretty quality content So if you want to check that out and support us, by all means, it's in the description below. But as far as the podcast goes, my first order of business in terms of New Year's resolutions, it's going to be growing the show. Now, let's put this into perspective. 69 Whiskey released its first episode in October of 2020. That's roughly 14 months from where we're at right now. And to think... That in just those 14 months, your boy, almost single-handedly, no disrespect to Eric, but I'm the one that runs the social media, was able to help garner over 3,000 podcast downloads for our show in about 53 to 54 episodes, depending on what we're going to do for this week's episode that we have. For me, that's an accomplishment. Now, it could always be better, but no show is going to be Joe Rogan overnight. So my goal this year is to work the niche a little bit more, is to interact with more podcasts, get on more, and this is kind of goes into a couple of different points, interact with more podcasts, kind of build with their audience to see if they're interested in our show, do things like that, do better social media production. But at the same time, I'm just one man. I am one man that does all of this shit. I would like some help. So who knows if anyone that works with our show is willing to help me. Because I can't do everything alone. I was able to do it for 14 months, but it's starting to get to a point where it's becoming a little bit more difficult for me. 
And I kind of already talked about this already, but my next point is also like working with other podcasts more frequently. In those 14 months, we worked with a plethora of great people, great podcasts, host, you know, Jody, local neighborhood baby, the, my boys at the Porn Stash podcast, you know, and so many others I can't even name off the top of my head. But I want more. There are so many other people that I've met in these group chats that the podcast is a part of that it's so hard to like pick out who you think is going to be the best option. Because we kind of cover a couple of different topics regarding drinking, sex, BDSM, entertainment, things of that nature. But I really want to start to work with more people because I think that's going to be not only better for the show, but I want to make more friendships in podcasting. So I'm kind of thinking about this from both kind of a selfish and selfless aspect as well. Because not only do I want to help grow their show and talk to them and get to know them and be friends with them... You know, I want to work with them in a sense where I think their audiences could be our audience as well. And that's just how I kind of see it. And last but certainly not least in terms of podcast goals and New Year's resolutions I have for that is sponsorships. Luckily for us, we had a couple of small scale sponsorships throughout the course of this year. And while they were great and I loved writing the spots for them, I wanted more. I still want more, and I want more going into 2022. And I don't mean to sound like a woe is me type of person, but for me to put all of this effort and for Eric to put all of this effort into the show and to get to a point where we are now almost single-handedly by ourselves, which is next to impossible if you're starting out a podcast, we put so much effort in and I put so much effort in that to think that we make next to no money off of it kind of makes me sick a little bit because there's so much effort and there's so much stuff that we do from promotion to editing. I mean, editing alone takes me almost a whole day. I sit here and I don't make a cent. So my goal is to not only grow the show, but I want to grow the show to a point where sponsors are going to start coming to us and say, hey, we would like to advertise some stuff on your show. And we would tell them, well, what's your price? Not that we're looking to be bought. I don't want to make it sound like that. But doing a fucking podcast is a lot of work. And everyone always has the intention to make a little bit of money off it on top of what they do already. So we'll have to see what lies for us in that regard. There's still a whole lot of other resolutions I want to make. But this video is kind of going a little bit long for my taste. So... Ladies and gentlemen, Happy New Year. I hope all your hopes and dreams are accomplished in 2022. For the love of God, don't be a fucking prick. My name is Edge0626. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other because a lot of people don't do that shit anymore. Happy New Year.